Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 16, we will cover mixed cell referencing. All right, so I have a table here that consists of different quantities in column A and unit prices in row five for ice cream. I wanna see how changing these two factors can affect the sales of ice cream, so let's do some calculations. To do this, we'll have to use mixed cell referencing. For the first step, we're going to multiply our quantity by our unit price, press enter, and then drag to fill in the rest of the row in the table. Now you can see the number two numbers that were autofilled don't look correct, and that's because our referencing isn't correct in our original formula. Here, we're going to have to put a dollar sign in front of the A, and then a dollar sign in front of the 5. This tells Excel to only stay within column A and row 5. I'm going to press enter and then drag the new formula across again. And you can see that looks a lot better. I'm now going to fill in the rest of the table with the formula. Just take a second here. All right. So one thing I always like to do is to double check the uh, value in the bottom right hand corner just by doing a manual calculation of 300 times 649, and you can see we have 1,947, which is the same value we got with our mixed cell referencing equation, so we are all good in this case. So now let's see if the same method works on a different arrangement of the same data. You can see I have the same unit prices and quantities, but this time I just have their location switched. So remember, whenever you are typing in your equation, it'll always be the cell to the left multiplied by the cell above. For your cell referencing, remember you are always going to put your dollar sign in front of the letter of the first cell and the number of the second cell. I'm then going to drag this formula across to fill in the rest of my table, and then we can do a double check with the numbers above to see if it is correct. If we quickly look at the numbers above, we can see they are all the same, so we don't have to do any manual double checking in this case. So this method will always work for multiplication and addition, but what if we use division? Let's look at an example of that next. All right, so I have a profit splitting example here, so we'll be using division this time. I have different profit values in column A, and then I have different numbers of team members in row four. We can follow that same rule we were using before in this case, which was to always do the cell on the left um, first, divided by the cell above second. Now for our cell referencing, we can again follow the same principle we were following before, which is to put the dollar sign in front of the letter of the first cell, and then another dollar sign in front of the number from the second cell. I'm going to drag the formula across and down to fill in the rest of our table quickly. Now we'll want to double check the value in the bottom right hand corner by doing a manual equation. So I'll quickly just do 1500 divided by 5. And when we press enter, we can see that we got 300, which is the same value here, so our table is correct. One word of caution if you want to use this method is that you must arrange your data properly in your table. You need to arrange it so that when you are putting in your first equation, the cell to the left is the first number in your equation and the cell above is the second number in your equation. Let's try checking our method again on the same table data, but let's try a different arrangement. You can see now I have profit and number of team members switched in their locations. Since this is division, I'm going to have to do the cell above first, divided by the cell to the left. Now this is going to change my mixed cell referencing a bit, and it's going to be an opposite of what we're used to. For my first cell, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the number, and my second cell, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the letter. When I press enter, that looks good, and then I'm just going to fill in the formula for the rest of my table here. If we take a moment and compare the two tables, we can see that the raw data is arranged differently, but the numbers all still match up. Just one tip to make things a bit easier, 
I always like to arrange my data and format it in a way that you can enter your cell on the left first and then the cell above second. This I find is just easier and always follows that same method of mixed cell referencing. So that is what we did in this first table here. So that concludes our lesson for today. We have learned a simple way to use mixed cell referencing. Thank you for watching and tune into the next video where we will cover the if function.